Razor Rob here, end of year rant. Today we're going to talk about ego lifting, everybody. It seems to be uh, something that's big on social media. Um, they uh, People think it's funny, I think. You know, I'm looking at it. I'm trying to figure out things. I like to analyze things for a long time, different angles and from different point of views. And trying to see it from their point of view, which, yeah, I guess when I was young, you know, the first time in a gym, couple first couple of years and in a hardcore gym seeing all the big you know jacked you know pros and shit working out in there and I had some a couple of really cool guys that one guy I went to high school with uh, the, the first bodybuilder that I've ever uh, you know really been real good friends with was his name's Tom Acosta and he was uh, he was really big back in back in the mid 90s and, and he competed against Flex Wheeler and Jay Cutler and you know the guys like that this guy was really big a natural bodybuilder for a uh, like 15 years ever since he was a teenager he got to in the you know 240s 250 pounds and he was a 5'8 uh he was my height this guy had huge legs huge back arm everything he had a total package small waist he was you know not, like i said natural and then he was uh dabbling into some um growth hormone and, and, and learning how to use the the insulin growth hormone and igf stack and he he, he never really went to the other you know um more popular steroids of the of the 80s and he never did the like the de deca and all you know test and all that and, and you know equipoise and all that no, the normal shit the street shit people get he was just you know went straight from natural and then learning little by little how to how to manipulate his own hormones but i also uh he told me a lot about ego lifting because he caught me one time yeah i'm, I'm guilty you know the the story greg valentino tells about arnold schwarzenegger <laughs> Say, don't get emotional, you know, Try, trying to do the fucking push downs like everybody does, you know, sometimes get a little crazy with your push downs. Uh, I was doing leg press and I had it pretty much racked up and I was coming down all the way to the bottom and hitting, hitting. I had the, 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 the stopper on the bottom coming down real deep, kind of close, my knees right, right, my face like that close coming down, hitting. And he's like, after a set, he heard the hitting and he went over there and told me, and that's really bad for your joints, man, your back and your knees and, you know, coming to a complete stop like that and jarring the joints, you know, it's, a, uh, you know, uh, counterproductive to your growth because it could cause injuries. And I was like, yeah, so I didn't, back then I wasn't even a personal trainer. I was a sales guy. So yeah, I, I, I said, yeah, I'm going to take a certification and he recommended NAFC. So NAFC back then and ACE and uh, NFPT and there's a lot of them. I, I pretty much was obsessed with just getting every certification there was, uh, taking every course and passing every course and putting my little degree and shit. I had it in my own office back then and, and as a personal training manager and putting all the certifications. So when somebody walked in my office, I mean, I wanted to overwhelm you. I wanted to overwhelm someone who walked in my office that was going to ask me about training. It, whether it was me or one of my staff or somebody else on the staff. I mean, I was a, a personal training manager at Grove Fitness in Coconut Grove, uh, Miami. And I was also personal training manager in New York Sports Club in uh, the 41st and 3rd store, uh, 41st and 3rd New York Sports Club, uh, Harborside Sports Club. Um, a couple times I was, I was training, tra I was a master trainer there so I could train anywhere I wanted which was fucking beautiful in the East Coast. You know, you take the fucking train, get the, where do I feel like training today? any fucking where you wanted this is before smartphones you know we had a little fucking little ch children's guide little fucking new york guide i was like oh am i gonna train that let me train over in broadway today let me train at wall street wall street i like the wall street I like to train around all those fucking brokers man that was fucking a blast anyway when they i gave a broker my card and they thought they were big shit you know morgan stanley i'm a morgan stanley broker well so what come look at my office we're talking about gym shit they come and they walk in, they see all those certifications from every certification board. Then they see all the trophies that I won. <laughs> it's like a big line of trophies, all the divisions, everything. I mean, dating back to 1997. So it's like, I, they were just overwhelmed. And I'd sit them down and say, well, what, what are your goals? Let's talk about goals. You know, working at Gold's gym, that was a results-based training. Okay, that, that was a... Uh, that was a serious gym. Serious choices, that's what we used to tell you. Are you in here to bodybuild? Were you in here to powerlift? Were you, to, you, you had to be doing something. You can't just be a fucking average Joe walking in. Yeah, I want to join Golds. Why? You can go over there to this one. Why do you want to come here? It's like you kind of put that wall up and people are like, what the fuck is this? Because we're serious. And that's the way I am. So when they walked in my office, 
What's your goals? How much, how much, how, how much muscle mass do you want? Do you want to lose body fat? What's your, write down how much muscle and how much body fat you think you want to weigh. And I'll look at it and say, let's tell you how, how it's possible, how much it's going to cost, how long it's going to take. And they were just like, yeah, that's what, and I guaranteed I showed them this client was my last one, my last one, my last one. Here's before and after picture. Here's his body fat test. Uh, I mean, like everything was fucking perfection. And the brokers, shit, let me see your rates. That's, that's all they would ask me. After my little fucking 15 minute spiel, they'd be like, where, 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 where's your rate sheet? I gotta go, I got a meeting. You know, just rate sheet, telephone call, uh, the front desk would get it, do it, or my manager would do it. Neil, thank you so much. See that real manager books training appointments for all his clients, gets all the trainers booked, even the, the personal training manager. Everybody, because we're all on the same team. New York Sports Club was a team. Everybody worked for everybody. They knew that if you made this much money, that the club made this much money, and they would also eventually make this much money, and then the club would make this much money. They knew about business, okay? It was all same team. God, I wish that place would come to Miami or anywhere else. That, uh, Town Sports International, I can't say. The best. Town Sports International is the best training company in the world. Period. Sorry, Golds. Golds used to be, but then they just, I don't know what happened to Golds. When Ed Connors sold his his shares in the Golds gym, it just, for some reason, Ed's le Ed left, and the fucking thing fell apart. But anyway, back to ego lifting. Okay, I have one rule in my gym, and this is wherever I was, and especially uh, World Gym. I had a problem with World Gym in Edgewater when I was uh, moonlighting, doing a New York Sports Club, and Edgewater World Gym right before Ed Tranny, the, the owner, sold it. Anyway, it was, it was, there was a lot of fucking people in there lifting crazy and I would say shit on the microphone. Hey, yo, rack up your shit, man. Or don't, don't take the fucking weights off one side of that fucking squat bar. You got a four fucking, uh, four plate limit minimum, motherfucker. And I'd be like, what are you talking about? If you take one more plate off, that thing's gonna fall over. And I would just, I would just monitor everything in the gym. Don't unrack the leg press on one side. Do, do it little by little, both sides. They take all the fucking weights off, all the fucking 15 plates off, or actually 22 plates because 15 and there's two of those bars. They take all the plates off and leave all the plates. Fucking leg press, this is fucking leaning this far over. I'm like, what the, you guys gonna see with my perspective, man? I have to clean this equipment, make sure it's in running condition. So I would explain shit to him. I mean, I mean, lightning speed. The thing's bending. The 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 bearings inside are gonna get fucked up because you're unloading it wrong. I would just tell them they they hate me, man. They the the serious guys, the pros, and all the NPC competitors would look at me and like, hey, that's fucking this guy's got the shit on lockdown. I don't, we don't have to, anything to worry about. They can train as hard as they want. It, I special privileges to competitors, you know. They would, they would, they would be allowed to make a mess. I told them, just go ahead. Don't worry about it. I'll take, I'll take care of it. When's your show? No, no, no. You know, commerce. You know, and uh, mutual respect for other competitors. IFBB competitors can make the biggest fucking mess they want. I don't give a fuck. I have a spray bottle. I got towels. I just go ahead, just train. You know, I'll keep everybody out of your way. I would even get that little divider thing. Would you hook it and you fucking pull it, and then it's got that nylon thing in it. <laughs> Put the thing over it. Just keep out. It's a pro train in here. <laughs> Fuck it, just to separate, I would want to do that. There was a psychological meaning and reason for doing that. People come to me, why you kiss their ass so much? Because they're serious. This is their fucking job. They're here at work. They're not here on leisure like you guys, fucking weekend warriors. Like, you know, he'll feel he's talking about a weekend warrior. That's what a weekend warrior is. There is no weekend warrior competitors. Not in the NPC and not in the IFBB, definitely. Okay, but I've seen the amateurs work harder than pros, twice as hard as pros sometimes, especially if they're doing nationals. You want to see somebody bust their fucking ass? Look at somebody who's been top five uh, nationals going on three times. You'll see somebody fucking insane. Okay, that's a, the kind of competitor that you want in your gym. You pay to have in your gym because people see that type of intensity and that type of commitment and they'll be like, Okay, now I get it. Yeah, now you get it. Now come see me and I'll tell you how to go. 
You got, you've got a direction. Now you fucking understand your little comprehension of how hard it's going to be and how much you're going to have to fucking suffer. Now you're going to come see me and get a roadmap to how fast you can get there. You can get there on your own trying to figure shit out. Take you fucking 10 years, 10 years of your life gone. And you look at all these other motherfuckers in the mirror and they're like, well, these guys are posing. They, look at your shit. You know, what the fuck are they doing? Ah, they're just doing steroids. It's like, no, dude, they're doing it right. And you're something's wrong with you. I don't know, but half the time, 50% of the time, when you see somebody not getting results in the gym, and they've been training over like five years or in six, seven, eight years going on, they're just not that big, you know? You just look at them and they're not developed. You're like, what the fuck is he doing wrong? Intensity, 50, 50% of the time, they lack intensity. They're, you put a heart rate, this is how I cure it, as a trainer, as a training manager, okay? Here's, a, as a professional, slap a heart, a good heart rate monitor on them, tell them to do a set, do a set. Look at that heart rate. Dude, your heart rate didn't get high for shit. You're not, that's not intensity. Go heavier. I fucking spot them and they're fucking straining and they, they don't have enough physical health to stress their body enough to get their heart rate high. It's not going to work. They need to fucking go back to basics. I take them all the way back to powerlifting. They're doing fucking deadlifts and shit. They're doing fucking in the, in the fucking cage all the way down, touching fucking squats, fuck parallel squats. I have them doing lunges with, I get dumbbells and I put dumbbells on the shoulders so they have to, you know, the balance for their core. I make them fucking go deep with fucking, like sometimes 80, 90, 100 pound dumbbells. They're 200 pounds on their head and they're going deep all the way down long fucking lunges and step back lunges and all kinds of crazy shit up here with weight up above your head. That's how you do it, build core strength when they just don't have the core strength either to, to support the fucking type of bench press that they want to try to do or the type of, uh, you know, leg press or whatever they're, they're trying to do. They just don't have the core. Now, you don't want to build a big fucking belly. That's the, uh, that's the opposite. And see, that's my Vince Garanda background in the very beginning of my training career. Everything was Vince Garanda. This motherfucker was a brilliant, like, scientist when it came to kinesiology. And his biomechanical fucking knowledge surpassed everyone of the era. So I like to, I follow him. I follow Charles Palkwin, like I mentioned. I, I follow anything that's from Weirder. I know all the Weirder principles, every single one. I've, I've learned and used and displayed every single one. Even on film, I used to, back when it was VHS, I have a whole series. I try to fucking figure out how to convert it so people can see all these videos I made on bodybuilding. Anyway, I, I have a long past and a lot of experience in gyms with certification boards, okay? Nobody is allowed to ego lift. They never do. I had my first wife. She could uh, do leg press of 765 pounds for 12, five sets of 12. That's a, that's, I'll show you pictures. Pictures never lie. So I, crazy shit, you know, deadlifting 225 for reps. Crazy, 120 pound uh, figure, you know, I have very strong, some people are just fucking strong. Their neural connectors for their muscles are just, they have more, uh, nervous system. Their nervous system is built up. They have, they're, they're like, if you look at a, a stereo system, they're a fucking big old monster cables. They, they just, that's the way they're wired. That's just the way their genetic genetics are. There's people's strength and some people don't have that connection. doesn't mean they weren't bo born with lots of muscle mass because they're mesomorphs. So, you know, you got all different kinds of people. You have to analyze these people. You have to tear it apart, break it all down, okay? Break down, show them the breakdown, explain to them the breakdown, show them comparisons, okay? Use your credentials. And you have to talk them into what they need to do to get the body that you want to build them. If they're not into it, if they're not talked into it mentally, mentally conditioned to accept what they have to do and what, what I, as their trainer, or one of my staff is going to tell them they need to do, then they won't do it. They need to understand, they need to accept, and then they need to execute with commitment. That means fucking cheddar. You put the money down on the table if you want what you're gonna get. Otherwise, you're a poser. Okay, no ego lifting. Anybody who does that is just attention seeking. It's all attention seeking behavior. People, even they, though they don't think it's attention seeking, it is because a bodybuilder doesn't have an attention seeking behavior instinct. Bodybuilders are different. A real bodybuilder is in there to work his muscles. Kai Green explains it perfectly.
you know, the, with the demonstration of the ego lifter, the bicep guy makes him do the fucking curls like this and shit so that he's hitting just the belly. I, I always use squats, for instance. Somebody will have three, four plates up there. I go, dude, why don't you do one rep right? You'll get so much more benefit if you just do maybe two or three reps right. He goes, what are you talking about? Shut the fuck up. Ah, we're fighting, fighting. But they have to break this motherfucker down. Because when I say some shit, and I don't mean to do this, I really don't mean to humiliate, I mean to be direct, not humiliate. I said, please just do it this way, and I guarantee you'll be sore in so many places, and you're going to love it. You're going to grab your leg and go, fuck, finally, is what I wanted. Because I know you're trying to get sore with all that weight, but it ain't working because you're not going far enough down. I would take all the weight off, bring them out of the fucking cage, so they don't... No distractions. Stand right in front of them. Fucking have them go all the way fucking down until your legs don't bend anymore and your posture's up. His posture's upright as much as possible. He's like, ah, and then have him slowly push up, not locking out, holding the, keeping the pause, keeping the time under tension, and have him do 15 to 20 reps with like 225. He's dying. The 225, whoop, beat the fuck out of his quads and hams and glutes. I mean, he's done. You, and, and then they'd be like, okay, I see, I see. I need, I know I need to, what I need to do. But sometimes you have to do that, and sometimes you can just explain it. If the person's not in that good of shape, you can have them do it with an upper body exercise, like Kai Green with the curls, okay? It all has to do with somebody's athleticism. Through, through their experience of strength training, weightlifting, power training, power lifting, which is all bodybuilding. This is Razor Rob. I want everybody to have a happy new year. Be safe, okay? Warm up your joints, stay warm, okay? Warm up, do some stretches, all the time stretching in between sets. Yes, stretching in between sets. Stretching, stretching, stretching. I stretch like a damn grizzly throughout the entire training session, so do my clients. Talk and stretch, talk and stretch. If they're talking, blah, 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 start talking after, they do a set, hey, stretch. Talk and stretch though. You have to keep stretching or you're not allowed to talk. <laughs> Everybody have a Merry New Year. <laughs> Razor Rob signing out.